Hello everyone, this is Astoki here. Welcome to another Minecraft video. This is video number 27 and a half. I call it 27 and a half because I had finished 27 and I haven't started 28 yet. This is one of my subscribers, uh, KillinPetta99. Just gonna make sure that's the right name. Yep, KillinPetta99 has just told me that I said I would do something in a previous video and I've forgotten to do it so here it is this is going to be a tour of the guild I've been meaning to do this for quite a long time because I still think there are things in the guild that I don't know about but let's start at the start and I think this should be a quick video which is why it's 27 and a half and not 28 so obviously this is the very entrance to the guild there is glowstone here and here which can be smashed and replaced with torches for those of you who are looking to maybe build a Philosopher's Stone without having to go to the nether. There is an infinite spring here which looks as though it's crossing two biomes because it's half swamp water and half normal water. This is a villager who basically just says that he's a survivor and you need to go rescue his people. Come straight through this way and you have the farmer and if you right click on the farmer he will give you bread. That guy is getting owned. This doesn't look good. What kind of hero would I be if I didn't save the guild? Plus crocodile hide is pretty valuable. Um, what don't I need? Uh, sticks and have squillions of sticks and I do need some bread so I'll just chuck this axe on the floor for now eat the bread and pick it back up so yes as I was saying here we have a farmer now you can harvest all his wheat because he doesn't use it but as you can see here from somebody earlier it doesn't actually grow back so you have to replant it and grow it back yourself if you want it to look sort of complete then over here we have the blacksmith this guy you can buy basically any kind of tools and armor from and he will take your items that you sell. You have to be really careful though if you sell an item that's from a mod that it doesn't recognize the game just goes eh, and spits you out and corrupts your save so or at least that's what it did with me last time I tried so I wouldn't suggest doing that. Now this here is the fighting arena now if you have uh, two wooden swords uh, the reason I say you need two is because you talk to someone and they say you seem like a tough fighter give me a wooden sword and let's have a sparring match basically what he will do is you give him a sword and you pull your own wooden sword out and you fight and if you win you get a little message that says wow you're a good fighter I'm gonna tell the guild master and he gives you some of some of I don't know whether it's renown or prestige or whatever it is that you earn but he gives you some of it these things here are all buttons for those who are redstone inclined you can pop those off and use them in your machines because to be honest the guild really doesn't miss them coming back in here is the banker or at least that's where the banker would be if the banker was installed I'm not sure which particular version of Tower Kingdoms has the banker start but I do know that he's in the Technics pack so he might be there he might not be there it depends on which particular version of the Tower of Kingdoms mod you're using at this stage he doesn't actually do anything because they haven't implemented losing gold I've currently got 1859 gold there's, uh, I guess there's plans afoot that if you die, you lose some of the gold you're carrying on you. So you can use him to store your gold while you're out adventuring until you come back. This guy here becomes super important later. He tells me at the moment I'm not worthy. Basically, once you fill that red bar with the Guildmaster, which I'll show you in a second, he will follow you and will build your kingdom. This guy here is the innkeeper. You can rest in a room, which makes it the next day or you can wait for night time which is good if you want to kill mobs and you don't want to wait for the whole day I will go up that way in a minute just running across the balcony that's where you can see all the other stuff and then of course there's some more things out that way which I'll go to soon so coming through this way that's the top of the well here we have it's like a bit of a dining hall sort of area that looks up at the library or the library looks down in it depending on which way you talk about it and down here is the, I call him the food cooker guy. I think he's a chef. If you get him to come close to you, 
hey you go over here you can right click on him and they will sell you food so you can buy rotten flesh cooked chicken you can sort of buy whatever you want golden apples are super expensive though but you can also sell items and he will buy I think the same things that the blacksmith buys I think there's plans in the winds to change that though that the blacksmith will only buy certain kinds of items and he'll buy certain other kinds of items but certainly at the moment that doesn't seem to be the case anything that has a value they pretty much both buy and I think I showed you in one other episode that there's a bit of a glitch at the moment that's an exploit where if you sell certain items using equivalent exchange you can then kind of convert things and end up making more money back now that tower doesn't actually have an entrance or at least not one that I can find and I've never tried looking inside it but I guess now's as good a time as any it looks to me to be quite solid I'm thinking yeah it's definitely a solid tower Ooh, with some glowstone in it I don't know what the purpose of that glowstone is but um, hopefully I've got enough cobble that I can put this back together and I want to leave it notice Um, four left. Uh, one. Um, you need to move. You're in the way. Um, two to go. One, two. There you go. Good as new. No one will even notice. And hopefully no mobs will spawn in there. So, um, it looks like there's some netherrack burning as like a bit of a signal fire, but other than that, nothing much. So keep coming around this side. There is another little tower, I guess you'd call it, that extends up from here. Lots of mossy cobblestone, and it doesn't actually have anything here, but it's kind of guard tower-ish. And a ladder that takes you up even further to, again, something that's, well, very guard tower-ish. Gives you quite a good view, actually, if you've got the render distance on far, and also lets you see in the tops of those towers that I was looking at a moment ago, and really does show you there's no, nothing in them. I was kind of hoping that if I stood up here that I'd be able to you know, see their burning village and then I'd be able to go and rescue those people but that doesn't seem to be the case and it also doesn't seem to be the case that I can see any millionaire villages from here so that both stinks so back down so unfortunately you have to head all the way back around to get anywhere so I'm going to try something a little uh, How? It's okay, I'll fix that fence. There you go. No one will even notice. Um, rotten flesh is your friend sometimes. I've got plenty of rotten flesh and I'm not too worried about getting poisoned. So that's, I guess, the first two levels of the guild that I've looked at now. So now we can come up here. And this is the library and here is the kind of understair area with a few tables and things this is really really handy because if you place an enchanting chest in here you are really you know one block away from lots and lots and lots of bookcases so you can actually boost the level substantially without having to make your own bookcases it was after I placed my enchanting table over in my little house which there you go doesn't look too bad from here nice little pointy roof bit of a silly thing at the back where I've made the top go up and so that's this level there's a jukebox here as well if you ever find a record and you can't be bothered to make your own jukebox excuse me but records being the rare things that they are it's easier to build your own jukebox and to find a record so we'll run down to this end and other than having some kind of infestation problem you have lots and lots of these little rooms so you have a bed and a chest in every single one of them. I think they're specifically made with not a bed so that you just can't sleep here and make the night go away so you go talk to the innkeeper but yeah they're all exactly the same so there's lots of identical rooms that funnel you down this way towards the guildmaster's office and again he's got a jukebox in the corner but no records for you to steal and here you right click on him and he can set you up for cancelling your contract which would just be silly because I'm about a third of the way there you can spend some of your hard-earned gold to 
hire some hunters who follow you around. I find unless you have plans to stand in a real open plain and kill lots of mobs, hiring the hunters is more annoying than useful. There's a double room there, I guess that's like the holiday suite. So this is basically the entire guild. I just thought I'd do a quick tour, so once again, thank you KillinPitten99 for recommending that I show everyone around the guild. I have to admit, it was actually the first time I watched a video of another Let's Play that someone else was doing that I even realised that the banker was there or that the food chef was there so you know, it does definitely pay to occasionally look around your surroundings just to see things because you don't always know everything that's around so once again this is a stocky just doing part 27 and a half to show everyone around this fantastic guild here thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed stay tuned for episode 28 coming soon Bye.